Let's rank every emitter in Hunter x Hunter. This is the basic criteria I used, and let's get right into it. At 16, we have Montreux. I don't really know what to say about this dude. He was in like one scene, and in that scene, he got absolutely dumpstered. His ability seems to be throwing punches a little bit further than they usually go, but that's really all he can do. He's at least a little bit strong if he can get into Greed Island, but that's pretty much the only thing close to an accomplishment he has. At 15, we have Luini. I don't really know if this guy is stronger than Montreux. He has a at least killed some people, but that's not exactly a hard thing to do in Hunter x Hunter. His ability does seem pretty versatile, but it also seems to have some high restrictions. Teleportation abilities are good in general, but they're not that good for combat, which is what we're ranking on. I think this ability could be good if it was in the hands of someone who was smarter, but it wasn't, and we have to go with what we have. At 14, we have a pirate boxer. That's right, an unnamed character ranks above those two. This guy has an ability that's pretty similar to Leorio's. He's basically able to move a punch across space. We actually saw this get used to one-shot Montreux, so we know for a fact he's stronger than him. But much like Montreux, that is one of the only times we see him fight, and the other time he gets laid out. He clearly has a weakness for people that fight up close and personal, which is pretty important when it comes to combat. It's also implied that he's only able to use this ability while he's in this specific boxing ring. If that's how this ability works, that would be a huge drawback. But unfortunately, there's not much clarity on that restriction. At 13, we have Sachmono. This funky man with spiraled side Burns is the first decent Nen user we have on this list. His ability basically allows him to create Nen puppets that will do his bidding, not dissimilar to a manipulator's ability. This ability would definitely be good for crowd control, especially since each puppet can hold a weapon, but that would only be the case if they were actually acting independently, and were not just simple-minded drones. The puppets are also not super defensively strong, as we saw them get ripped apart easily by Nen bullets. So while such Mono is a decent Nen user, his ability lacks in a lot of areas areas, which is leading to his low placement. In 12, we have Melody. In terms of raw strength, Sachmono might be over Melody, but Melody has a lot of indirect advantages that might put her over Sachmono. Let's start with her insane hearing abilities. She's got ears like a bat. Not only are her ears super sensitive to the point of being able to hear footsteps in rain, she can also hear heartbeats and can tell if people are lying or not based on that heartbeat. It's also kind of insinuated that she can sense general emotions from the heartbeat as well, but it might depend on the strength of the emotion. She also has her Nen ability, which allows her to infuse her music with Nen. We have seen this be used to reduce fatigue and stress, but what makes this ability really good is that it will hold the attention of anyone that listens to her if she plays a specific song. And when I say anyone, I mean anyone. This is a crazy strong ability, but it also forces us to address the two main flaws in Melody's Nen. First of all, she needs to be working with someone if she wants her abilities to have usefulness. Being able to reduce fatigue is useless if you have no one whose fatigue needs to be reduced. There's no point in freezing everyone for three minutes if there's no one that can take advantage of this opportunity. The second flaw in this ability is that it can be countered by noise-canceling headphones. While this is kind of a dumb weakness, it is also kind of funny, and it makes sense for a sound-based ability. Melody has some really interesting abilities, and I hope we get to see more of them explored in the continuing manga. At 11, we have Lynch. I am too white to say this name. Anyway, she is hard to rank because we just don't know that much about her. Her ability is a great support ability, as it allows her to gain information from her opponents if she wants to. She also has a strong drive to fight and took down some goons pretty easily. Unfortunately, the only other time we see her fight is when she tried to attack Hisoka, and it didn't go well for her. This makes it hard to determine her area of strength, as we've only seen her go against the two extremes of Nen users, that being little bitches and masters in their primes. Regardless, we can assume that she's not that strong, and as a result, she's lower on this list. At 10, we have Pockle. Oh, Pockle, you poor, poor soul. I'm gonna be honest, Pockle has one of the worst Nen abilities in the show. Seven Rainbow Arrows seems like it might be a versatile ability, but it just doesn't have a lot of power. Like, if even the horny spider can counter the fastest of his arrows, that means his skill ceiling must be pretty low. We do know that he struggles to learn Nen from the little recap at the end of Heaven's Arena, and this seems to be in line with what little combat we see, as he's just not an impressive Nen user in any way. He also lacks intelligence as he was not able to ascertain the strength of the ants, and his physical capabilities seem lacking as well. At 9 we have Bloster. Who doesn't love a lobster with guns for claws? We don't know a lot about this blue bastard, but we have seen his guns limits, as they can't get through hard steel doors. It also 
doesn't seem like he has a high degree of accuracy with his bullets, but it's not like he really needs one, thanks to his high rate of fire. It basically seems like a worse version of Franklin's technique, who we'll talk about later, because it's the same concept but with less guns. I really don't have anything else to say about this guy, he's just a lobster with guns. At 8 we have Leorio. Leorio is another one that is hard to rank, mostly because we only see him use his power one time. The power seems similar to the pirate guy, but it might be a little bit longer range. It's also possible that this ability can be used in rapid succession, as we saw with Zhang in the manga. We know Leorio is at least physically fit, as he did pass the hunter exam, but that's also kind of the bare minimum in this universe. Unfortunately, that's kind of where the positives end, because Leorio isn't exactly super intelligent by Hunter Hunter standards. No offense, it's just it's true. He does care about his friends a lot, and he's definitely a good hunter in general, I just don't think he's a good Nen user. But that is in stark contrast to our person at 7. Are you ready for a mouthful? Because up next, we have Knuckle. Knuckle has one of the most overcomplicated abilities in the show. Here's what it basically boils down to. Knuckle can activate his ability APR after landing a punch. Once APR is attached, it will increase the amount of Nen stored in it based on the flow of the battle. When Knuckle lands hits, the amount goes up. When he gets hit, the amount goes down. On top of the amount transition between the fighters, APR also accrues interest over time. So the longer the battle goes on, the more the number will increase. If the number increases to a certain threshold, it forces the opponent into Zetsu for 30 days, and they are unable to use Nen for that time. This ability is great on its own, as it can let Knuckle snowball his way to victory. But to be honest, the main reason he's up here is just because he's a stronger, more knowledgeable Nen user in general, compared to everyone below him on this list. There is a huge gap in skill between Knuckle and Leorio, so putting him at 7th was kind of a no-brainer. At 6 we have Nov. I had to approach Nov a bit like I approached Melody. His main ability is not that combat based, and from what we see of him he isn't particularly impressive from a combat point of view either. While he does have Scream, that ability isn't exactly good for open combat, as it is easy to see and easy to avoid if you are a half-decent Nen user. Regardless of this, his ability is one of the best abilities in the show, and offers a huge amount of versatility and flexibility, but only in non-combat situations. Nov is a great Nen user and is super useful in multiple situations, but I don't think he has the same raw power as the people in the top 5. Speaking of the top 5, the first person that qualifies is also the first and only member of the Phantom Troop on this list. At 5th we have Franklin. Franklin has one of the most straightforward Nen abilities. Nen bullets. These bullets made of Nen seem to be extremely powerful, as they were able to clear out an entire auditorium of non-Nen users and even tear up an opposing Nen ability. These Nen bullets are likely made stronger by the restriction that Franklin put on himself by cutting his own fingers off. On top of his Nen ability, Franklin is also a super level-headed person. Not just physically, he was literally the only troop member thinking about Krollo's kidnapping rationally. Between this big brain of his and his simple yet versatile ability, it should become obvious why he's in the top 5. At 4th, we have Zeno. The first of two assassins on this list, Zeno is a great Nen user in every sense of the word. He has abilities that allow him to be offensive and play a support role. We've seen him use his dragon based abilities in a number of different situations, showing his versatility. From using Dragon's Head in his fight against Krollo, to using Dragon Dive in the castle invasion. His hand to hand combat skill also seems to be quite high because, I mean, this dude is just slinging punches. He also probably has the most Nen experience out of everyone on this list, simply because he's older than everyone else. And also because being in the business that he's in requires a high degree of knowledge and experience. Zeno is another great Nen user, but I don't know if he can keep up with the top three. At third we have Silva. Silva is currently the strongest Zuljic, or at least he most likely is. While Zeno does have way more experience, I think Silva's raw strength outmatches Zeno's. We don't know a lot about his abilities unfortunately, but he was able to one-shot a Chimera Ant, and he also has enough Nen to do this giant double-fisted attack which pretty much obliterated this auditorium. We know he was at least strong enough to beat a troop member on his own, but unfortunately we don't know much about his combat skill beyond that. He seems at least somewhat intelligent and very level-headed as well. While his motivations and morals are questionable at best, there's no question in regards to his strength. And now, at second, we have Razor. Razor is a terrifying Nen user. His ability basically allows him to put Haikyuu into Hunter Hunter, and by that I mean he has the ability to summon an entire volleyball 
team worth of puppets to help him with his endeavors. These puppets can be combined to become more powerful or divided to become more numerous. The fact that he alone was able to take on some of the strongest Nen users in the show in that dodgeball game is insane, and it has huge implications for what he might be able to do in other combat situations. He also has this energy ball attack, which completely destroyed the ship the troop used to get onto Greed Island. Between this long range attack and his absolute control of his pirates, he is by far the strongest Nen user we have come across up to this point, and that's not even mentioning that he's a death row convict. Who knows what he did to get that sentence. But much like the other two videos, he's really no challenge for number one, because at number one we have the canonically strongest character in the show, Meruem. Yes, believe it or not, Meruem is an emitter, not a specialist. I don't think we really need to get into why Meruem is the strongest. I mean, he compressed the time of the fourth strongest person on this list, and straight up beat the strongest human in the show currently. And he doesn't even have a real ability, he just has raw strength and a brain bigger than anyone else's. He is literally the peak of his species, and it's pretty much explained to us that no human will ever be stronger than him just because of the difference in evolutionary priority. He's the strongest character in the show by far, and as such, deserves first on this list and on any list. If you made it all the way to the end, be sure to check out my new Twitter. There's a link to it in the description down below as well as a link to the Discord. Also, please consider subscribing if you're still watching since you obviously like the content. Thank you so much for watching yet another video, and I'll see you again in just a week.